Good morning, morning Giants. Giants. Today is January 28, 2020, 22. I'm Taryn Coles. And I'm Kenny Charlie. With your weekly newscast. As we all know, COVID has had a major impact on everyone's <coughs> lives. <coughs> My bad. Keep going. Healthcare workers have done an amazing job saving lives every minute of the day. You're absolutely right. Let's get an inside look on how their job really is. With the increase in COVID patients, we often forget about the nurses who are dealing with COVID every day. Let's see what they're going through. We had people dying and we didn't know really what to do and all we knew was we couldn't have anybody there. But during the very beginning of the pandemic and even now since we're having another big increase in our numbers, people aren't always getting better. So you just have to understand that even though I'm not going to be able to necessarily save this person or be a part of their healing, I'm going to be a part of their family's healing as they have to say goodbye to their family member. The morale um, of nursing at my particular hospital has never really improved. So now with this new variant and increase in patients, um, it's really sad. Nurses are, it's hard for them to come into work every day. Um, they just feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. With, um you know, needing nurses and um, not having enough beds and enough space and enough people to care for the patients. Um, any given day, we can be running 20 nurses short and have to ask people to pick up extra and um, come in on their off days to help out. Let's all try to help nurses in the fight against COVID by washing our hands, wearing masks, and getting vaccinated if you are able. Lily Nagel, BD TV. Technology is everywhere around us, but only 7% of these IT specialists are women in color. Let's go to Christian Jew for more information on this story. My name is uh, Jalen Boyd. I'm a software engineer, and I own two businesses on the side. Black Lives in Tech is less so about the cultural aspect of it and more so about pushing people who may live in poverty areas to get into the tech field. While the statistics are, you know, 70% of individuals in tech are white, um, they're also dominated by men as well. So you have a lot of men who do this thing called mansplaining to women, really looking down on them and like, oh, they can't do it, you're just a woman. For every 95 cents a woman makes, a man in the same field, same position makes about a dollar. So, you know, add that up to an annual salary, they're losing thousands and thousands of dollars just because of their gender, you know? Controlling for overall racial disparities in tech hiring, why employees are significantly overrepresented in leadership positions while all other racial groups are underrepresented. So I am a uh, mentor for people who want to get into tech. I do that for free on the side. And it helps me pay attention to the details, like their goals. But that felt too particular. I didn't like only serving one percentage of a community, you know, because everyone can experience poverty. It doesn't matter what your color is, your gender, etc. So I want to be able to reach people no matter what their skin tone is. Um, so Black Lives in Tech is now called Saddler. Jalen has expanded from Black Lives in Tech to helping all kinds of races and genders. To reach Jalen if you're interested, go to Saddler Tech on Instagram. Drew Schreier, BD TV. TikTok is a massive video sharing platform that you're probably aware of. It is spread across the internet as one of the most used apps in today's age. There are many people who have built a career and influence based off their platform, but that's not without its own downsides. Honestly, okay, so I have 9 million likes and around like 400 or 650 some thousand followers and that basically all blew up overnight. I would say about my freshman year in college. The negative parts, I guess, of it is like being recognized out in public. So there, when I first started and people were finding out that I was a mask presenting lesbian, uh, I got death threats.
And I do think that any situation of bullying, harassment, and just even negative peer interaction is always going to take an effect on an individual's mental health. Um, that can vary um, to a certain degree, um, probably on, um, based on a lot of different factors, and certainly the, the frequency and, and length that they've been enduring that treatment um, can make a difference. And if you can't, I don't want to say deal with it, but if you aren't ready for some of those negative effects, then I would discourage people from that because it can cause some pretty messed up things to go on inside your head. When the pandemic hit, many magicians had to cancel all their shows, but most found their way around the pandemic. Today, I'm joined by three magicians who found their own way to do what they love. I'm Justin Flom. Hi, my name is Daniel Lusk. I'm Jack Grady. So if uh, anybody's ever seen any of my videos I post online, they're pretty crazy, uh, a little bit above PG-13, I guess you could say. And uh, actually prior to COVID, I was a full-time kid's birthday party performer. I found an organization, the Fellowship of Christian Magicians, and found out that they had a conference. I went to that, I saw my first magic show that I'd ever seen live and I met my first magicians, and I realized I really liked doing this. I started doing magic just as a source of income and a way to make money. And I didn't know if it would last very long, but that was 15 years ago, and I'm still doing it. It was. It was very cool. I was able to travel full-time doing magic uh, uh, live on stage. Yeah, most definitely. I had a whole month's worth of shows already booked out. They all got canceled within a good two weeks of each other. But, but when I started seeing show after show start to go, uh, I was preparing for a year, which people called me crazy. Started early thought. on making a new way of doing our business. And that included taking the couch out of my living room and moving everything around and putting in a broadcast studio right in the living room. And that With lockdown, my entire calendar of live shows was cleared. I was able to pour 100% into this new kind of social media videos, which was TikTok and Facebook. With these three talented magicians, David Lusk, BDTV. I think this magic swap dart. Look at me. Kenny? Look at this. Just, just get on with the news, guys, because look at, look at me. Look at my stomach. <clears throat> Reading is an amazing way to cope with mental health. Let's go into bio with more information on why reading is important. This is, this is bad. You look really nice. No, it's not. You look really nice. No, no. As you know, COVID took a very big toll on our mental health. One of the things that was not taught to us was how to cope with the stressors of the world of being isolated. But I'm here to show you guys a solution. That solution is simple, reading. Not only does reading help you get smarter, but it can also increase your brain power. Just like going for jog exercises for your cardiovascular system, reading regularly improves memory function by giving your brain a good workout. One of the things that it also does, it keeps your mind active. Another thing that can be talked about is the long-term effects of reading. Having to follow words and pay attention helps our memory skills improve and get better over time. It can also build up your vocabulary. This can lead to better conversational skills and turn lead to much improved communication. Did you guys know reading can also prevent diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's? So today, Giants, I encourage you to get out, get find a good book, and just read. Giants Vision has been gone for a long time. Now they are making an upcoming return. This is a great way to explore and express your creative mind. Here's me, Josh, and Jante on the Giants Vision magazine. Bring by your poems, your creative writing, your pictures, artwork that you might have created, anything like that, and we will include it in our online Giant Visions magazine that we're hoping to bring back this semester. Giant Visions is a online PDF folder magazine that will take the creative um, writing, arts, photos taken by the giant students and we'll put them together so that they can have a place to freely express themselves. For the newspaper I write about people's self-esteem and social media and just 
mental health awareness. The magazine um, left because there weren't a lot of students who were interested in continuing the magazine. And the magazine was brought back recently because me and my partner, Chelsea, uh, both expressed an interest in creative writing and trying to give people a place where they can express their own creativity. If you are interested in putting your work in the magazine, don't be shy. You can enter anonymously or you can put your name on it and submit it to Mr. Hayes' email or bring to room X109. Zariah Taylor, BDTV. With December coming on, we here at BDTV thought it right to recognize the December students of the month and recognize their excellence inside and outside of class. First off is Tilly Mata Hernandez in the 10th grade who was nominated for Listening with Understanding and Empathy. Her teacher, Carly Hickett, said that Tilly is one of the kindest, most hardworking students she has. And she has stepped up recently to help tutor other students after school. And she is very happy that she is able to help her classmates finish the year out strong. Congratulations, Tilly Mata Hernandez. Next is Yarek Colon in the 11th grade who was nominated for persisting. His teacher, Sam Flood, said that Yarek is one of his best students in the internship program and has given his best work at Walgreens and GFS. He's mentored other students, and due to his perseverance and persistence, he's been offered a paid position by GFS. Congratulations, Yarek Colon. Finally, we have Jeffrey Audi Rash in the 11th grade, who was also nominated for persisting by his teacher, John Easter. He says that Jeff is a radio student for him and shows his persisting nature each time he produces a ball game. As a producer, Jeff is critical in making sure everything works behind the scenes and is responsible for making sure the broadcast sounds great and making sure all the underwriting spots get played. One other thing he must do is problem solve to get an answer, and he's consistently solved problems through grit and perseverance, and his efforts definitely haven't been missed by BDTV. Congratulations, Jeffrey Audi Rash. With January in full swing, let's all try to make our New Year's resolution to be more like these outstanding students. Luke Smith, BDTV. Hi, I'm Jose along with this week's weather. Today, the high is a 28, low is an 11, partly sunny. Weekends, highs upper 30s, low Saturday mornings a 6. Next week, high of 51. Tuesday, low 18, rain, rain slash no showers midweek. I'm Jose along with weather, back to Kenny. As you know, there has been a lot of updates in sports. Let's go on to Chloe on what's been going on in sports. Hi Giants, I'm here to fill you in on sports this past week. Let's see what you missed. Last weekend, our boys basketball team went against Center Grove and won 44-43. Zane Dowdy saved the day with his free throws in the last seconds to win the game. Come support your boys basketball team at home against the Carmel Greyhounds tonight. Both teams are undefeated in the mix. They travel to Attics tomorrow. Come out and support our team. Moving on to girls basketball. After winning against Center Grove last weekend, this past week our Lady Giants went against Westfield Shamrocks for their last home game and lost. Our Lady Giants travel to Carmel tonight, so come and support your Lady Giants. JV starts at 6, varsity will follow. Next week they start sectionals at Perry Meridian High School. Last week, boys wrestling defeats Plainfield 52-23. They have a week to prepare for sectionals at Avon High School. This past Tuesday, boys and girls swimming lost their last swimming meet of the season against Plainfield High School. Thursday, they have started their sectionals. Check out BD Athletics on Twitter or Spotlight for more information. Good luck to all of our Giants. I'm Chloe Belton, BD TV. I got an injury during our first scrimmage of the basketball season. I went to set up to get a pass from my teammate and I ended up twisting my hips the wrong way and tore my ACL. I became really depressed after surgery. I had no motivation to do anything and I just didn't feel like talking to my friends or my family and it was just really hard. I tore my ACL by going for a loose ball in practice with one of my teammates during a contact drill and my knee popped out of place and I found out that I tore my ACL. The physical impact is having to leave class three to five minutes early, um, not being able to walk still, um, having to wear my brace for six to eight months. And... It was in weights, we were doing piles. I went up for a lateral jump and when I came down, the knee had slipped out and popped back in. And a few weeks later, I found out I did tear my ACL. For any other injured athletes out there, especially seniors, just keep doing your rehab 
got this. Listen to your trainers, focus, and don't rush something that is not supposed to be done yet. Hello, my name is Kay Thompson, class of 2023, wide receiver from Ben Davis High School. It was like a week, what was it? We were spending like a week in Arizona and we were just training. I was with my big brother Brock and we were just working out, getting ready for the season. And I started to have this pain in my knee, got worse and worse and worse the more I would work out. So when we got back home, uh, first thing we did, we went to the doctor and they got an x-ray, but they couldn't really tell what it was. And they just said, I had a, a bone cyst, but in the x-rays, you can't really tell what it like, looks like, how big it is. So then a week later, I went in and got an MRI and they said that I had a bone cyst, which was non-cancerous. So a couple weeks go on, I'm in a boot, sitting on the couch. Um, I had a couple friends over, we were playing the video game and my parents were outside for a really long time. I didn't really think anything about it. Then they eventually came back inside and they just had this look on their face and I knew something was up. So they sat down and they just looked at me and said, a uh, doctor called and said, do you have cancer? And in the moment, you don't really know how to react. So I just sat there and I was just like, huh. First thing I actually said was, well, this sucks. And I was laughing. Shocking to see that he had cancer because out of all people, I wouldn't have thought it, was, it would be him. Being in the hospital for so long and not being able to play for so long, watching, going to the games, watching my friends that I've grown up with play, and just thinking and realizing how much I love the sport of football. And just knowing I have a small chance to play again, I'm going to take it. Got to want to be a better athlete. You got to want to be a better athlete. This is good. When you look at what all Cave has been through over the last year plus, it's really easy to, to, to rally behind him and to encourage him. Now to have him back, to have him around our football team, to have him, whether it's in the weight room, whether it's at morning practice right now, whether it's just in the hallways or whether it's hanging out in my office, it, it's great to have him back. Good luck, Cade, and the rest of the football team. Mariah Scott, BD TV. And that concludes our newscast, Giants. I'm Taryn Coles. And I'm Kenny Trouble. And remember, if it's about you, you and me, me, it's on BD TV. Yeah.